This over here is AMD Threadripper, and oh, does this rip threads. This is Cinebench R23, and this is how fast it completes the whole segment. Wow, that was real time. It's not sped up. It's absolutely ridiculous. This here has 64 cores and 128 threads, and this is called the Threadripper 7980X. AMD has created another monster, and this has absolutely no competition. But regardless, I wouldn't recommend it for video and photo editing. Let me explain. Part of this video is sponsored by Newegg and their Black Friday deals. More about it later on in this video or in the video description below. Now, those of you who are running Threadripper 2nd Gen or 2000 series or 1st Gen or 3000 series, this is going to be very, very exciting for you because it's a whole new league and a whole new leap of performance what we're going to get from this one. And as you can see, I've got two boxes in here because the younger brother of this one, the the 32 core is actually benchmarking in there. Now it hasn't finished yet, but some of the benchmarks what I've seen is the 32 core actually is a lot better than the 64 core. So you definitely want to stay tuned for the 32 core review. But first I want to start with the specs of this because this is a completely new naming skew for this 64 core. The 64 core has always been the 90 X. So whether it's a 5990X, well that didn't exist, but 95WX, that was the Pro Series 5000, or the 3995WX, 9 was like the one that was like the highest end of the CPUs, but this time it's 8. 80X never actually existed, and they've created this because they created an even bigger monster, so this guy got a downgrade for the name. The new Pro CPU that has 96 cores is called the 7995WX. And both of these platforms are kind of interchangeable and overclockable. I highly recommend checking out the unboxing video that I released yesterday or a few days ago and then I'll explain a little bit more deeper like how the platforms intertwine and can you mix and match and but because you some of these things you lose some of the specs and some work on both and so on it's worth checking out but now the specs what I have put down here is the 5995WX which is the previous generation Threadripper 64 core CPU that's the equal amount of cores as we have here then the best of Intel mainstream which is the 14900K and then the best of AMD mainstream 7950X. Now, Intel does have their Xeon platform as well, but to be honest, at this price point and this price performance, it really doesn't make sense, especially what the Threadripper offers. Hence, we're comparing the mainstream and seeing how Intel and AMD mainstream compare to this Threadripper platform in video and photo editing as well as 3D. So in terms of core count, we have 64 cores and 128 threads. Absolutely insane. The max turbo frequency, you can see 4900K is 6 gigahertz, 7950X is 5.7 gigahertz. The 7980X here is 5.1 gigahertz on the box. And that's 600 megahertz boost from the previous generation 5995WX. But if you actually install the CPU onto the motherboard, and this is basic BIOS settings, but Asus wants to show that their motherboard is the best. They're actually running some clever, a bit of an overclock, if you want to call it, because it does, it is not the official spec. This 64 core CPU actually boosts to 5.65 gigahertz and it's like limited to that one. It might go even further if we set the limit higher on BIOS, but these are the basic spec from the BIOS. Only thing I've added from the BIOS is the XMP profile for the RAM or XBOR, sorry. Now, looking at the 5.65 gigahertz boost clock, we're getting 1.1 gigahertz boost from the previous generation. This guy over here. Since when did you see 1.1 gigahertz boost from the previous generation, especially on a Threadripper? That's absolutely insane. Moving on to PCIe lanes, it supports PCIe Gen 5 now, not PCIe Gen 4, which the previous generation only supported. And in terms of the PCIe lanes, it's got a bit of a mixed bag of all sorts of PCIe lanes. It's got 48 lanes of Gen 5, 
32 lanes of Gen 4 and an extra bonus 8 lanes of Gen 3 on the CPU. Compare it to the 5995WX, the Pro platform, which we had from the previous generation, that only had 128 Gen 4 PCI lanes. So now, even though the Threadripper doesn't have, you know, the maximum lanes of Gen 5, a lot there, I think it's completely fine because there isn't any Gen 5 devices out there. Now, I know that when you're going to buy this, you probably want to be future proof. But even if you're going to run three Gen 5 GPUs in there, the 48 lanes of Gen 5 are still fine. Newegg and their Black Friday deals are live right now. Up to 82% off PC parts, components, storage, full systems, laptops, peripherals, and much more. Whether you're looking for an upgrade, planning your build, or holiday gifts, you should go and check them out. Some of my favorites are the i5-12600K and 13700K on the CPU deals, ASRock 7900XDX and Zotac 4070Ti on the GPU deals, Next Storage and Iron Wolf Pro on the storage deals, MSI Summit and Asus VivaBook Pro 16X on the laptop deals. That's just the peak of the ice there's a lot more. Join me live tomorrow to see all of my recommended deals live on the channel. Just so you know, new deals are added daily, so it's worth checking them out again. Newegg is also running their GPU trading program for those looking to upgrade their GPUs. So go check out how much you might get for your current GPU, which would make the upgrade even more affordable. By the way, if you scrolled all the way right on the different like sections, you can actually sort the deals by on under 200, 100 or 50 dollars if you're looking to pick up some of the more budget deals. Go check out all of Newegg's Black Friday deals in the video description below. They're running them for a week and they're constantly changing until stock lasts. In terms of RAM support, it only supports DDR5 and RDIMMs and up to one terabyte in capacity. Bear in mind, RDIMMs aren't compatible with the mainstream non ardim ddr5 just so you know you have to have specially ardim because it runs in a different voltage and the notch is actually in a different place to actually slot it in so you can't make a mistake of plugging wrong ram in there the thread ripper is a quad channel memory compared to dual channel which we have on the 14th gen or the ryzen 7000 mainstream processors but it's not a channel memory what we had on the 5995WX or the actual pro platform of the 7995WX. They are actually eight channels. So when you opt to the pro platform for more creative pressure moles who do a lot of calculation, whether it's architecture, oil, chemistry, scientific, something like that, and you need the memory bandwidth, then you're going to actually get eight channel memory on that one. And that is called WRX90 platform. And I, again, I highly recommend checking out the previous video where I go a little bit more in detail about the comparison between them two. In terms of cash, we're actually using exactly the same amount of cash as on the previous 5995WX. The L3 and the L2 cache exactly the same. What has increased though is the TDP. The base power is not 280 watts anymore, it's 350 watts. There is also a PBO where you can overclock these and then you can, you know, up the limit to much higher, but I've tested it at the base 350 watts. There's no iGPU on there and it uses the 5 nanometer Zen 4 architecture from the Ryzen, you know, 7000 mainstream platform. Now, if you do want this monster, it comes at the price of $5,000. Yes, you can build a whole PC system for that mount and still have cash to spare to buy a monitor or some other peripherals. So check out the latest pricing in the description below. I want to talk about this testing platform, which is actually halfway through a build. I filmed the first part, stay tuned for that one, but I realized I better test the CPUs and now when it's half built before I have to tear down the system again. This is an exciting thread up a build, but it's not finished yet. Now AMD sent an N60 Kraken cooler to actually use for this thread repair, but I'm not using that cooler because I believe that when you're using a thread repair system, it's much better if you use the large coverage uh, AIOs from certain coolers that are specifically made for the thread repair. You're gonna get a much better thermal performance and even an air cooler would be completely fine for this when we're talking about the Noctua NHU 
14S, but for the Threadripper platform. I am using the NMX LickTech 2 360mm AIO that covers the whole IHS and is doing a wonderful job. I'm using 128 gigabytes of DDR5, 6400 megatransfers per second CL32 from G-Skill. We've got an RTX 1390 and some Gen 4 SSDs for OS and programs. If you want to check out the whole specs for all of the different platforms of the test bench, then I'll leave them linked in the description below, not to spend too much time on this video. One of the first things I want to talk about is the memory controller, because as a creator, it's very important that often gets kind of pushed aside when we're talking about this. Now, the Ryzen mainstream platform, they say that this is 5200 mega transfers when we're running two sticks. And when you put four sticks in there, it's actually going to drop down the memory, you know, frequency to 3600. Not the memory frequency, but the integrated memory controller. But the 7980X, even when you have four of these dim channels occupied, each channel has its own dedicated, you know, memory controller, if you want to call it that, IMC which means that it's still able to run them at 5200 mega transfers per second. AMD actually gave you a 64 mega transfers RAM kit, which just enabling the XM4 is just running completely fine, which means that you do get a little bit of a better IMC than the just Ryzen 7000 mainstream platform on the Threadripper system, and you can run much faster RAM in there compared to just the mainstream. Now, you might be able to get that there as well, but if you want to get larger capacities, higher frequency RAM, then the Threadripper is a much better and easier option to go to reach those speeds compared to the Ryzen 7000 mainstream platform. And compared to the 5995WX, you can see we increased it a ton because we're going from DDR4 to DDR5 now. In terms of the power consumption, you might be saying, whoa, 350 watt that cpu must be running like a hot toaster actually that is so far from the truth because the actual chiplets on here have been so spread out and the heat is so spreaded it is so easy to cool if you've got a dedicated threadripper cooler i can't say this for the just mainstream coolers that don't cover the whole ihs like this animax aio 360 millimeter never went above 70 degrees when fully utilized over 30 minutes is absolutely insane. Now, compared to the 4900K that also boosts almost to that 350 watts depending on your motherboard and if you've got the MCE uh, enabled or not, the 4900K runs at 100 degrees at 320 watts or something like that, but because the heat has been concentrated to a very very small spot and it's very hard to extract but not the case for this thread ripper now i want to talk about photo and video editing first and then we're going to go to the 3d which this cpu really shines at firstly photoshop and here you can see that even though it can boost to 5.7 or almost 5.7 gigahertz like the ryzen 7950x it is actually slower than the 7950X and the 14900K because photo editing is very, very lightly threaded and the program really doesn't know what to do with 64 cores, even though some of them can boost very, very high. The 32 core just finished Photoshop there and it's a lot faster than the 64 core, which just proves my point that the software doesn't know what to do with 64 cores. So like Photoshop was never built on a 64 core CPU there's way too many cores and it confuses and the performance isn't as high. But as you can see on the 5995WX, we've gained quite a bit of performance, about 12.5 to 14.9% slower in Photoshop. In Lightroom Classic, the 5995WX is 20 to 27% slower. Interestingly, the active score is only 4.7% slower, even though the single goal performance is a lot faster on the 7980X, but again shows the point that the software doesn't know how to utilize the fast cores and just all the other cores, and sometimes might use a core that isn't as fast or isn't boosting as high when scrolling through photos because we don't know what to choose from. First world problems, we don't know which core to choose. The 7950X is about 12. 5% slower and actually 8.1% slower in the active scores and 16.7% slower in the passive scores. The 14900K interestingly is 3% slower in the overall score and about 8% slower in the passive score. 
even though the Threadripper has many times more threads than the 14900K. Now the conclusion for photo editing would be that it's really not feasible for you to get this 7980X for photo editing unless you're doing very specific things in your workflow where you require the multi-core performance. Let's say you are a specific photographer who exports or converts a lot of big files whether into a panorama or a timeline lapse or exporting uh, a huge batch of photos to RAWs to JPEGs or TIFFs to JPEGs or something like that then the Threadripper here really really shines as you can see it can be about 8% faster in the passive scores compared to the 14900k but even at that point you really want to consider is that price point really worth it you know maybe not so i'd say wait for the 32 core review and see how they do in photo editing because it might be a much better bang for your buck in terms of money because it's half the price for video editing looking at premiere pro the 5995 wx is about 10 percent slower in the overall extended overall score and about 7.5 percent in the standard overall score but looking at the raw score the 7980x is a lot faster you can see the 5000 series is 25 percent slower in the extended scores there and interestingly for some miracle way about one percent faster in the long gop extended um score there so if we're talking about uh 8k video from sony a1 for example at h264 or h265 then interestingly they perform roughly about the same looking at the 7950x that's quite a bit slower here 3.3 to 7.8 percent slower in the standard and extended overall scores in some of the other scores the 7950x is a bit faster for example raw standard and gpu effects probably because of the faster single core performance but the 14900k is actually faster than the threadripper 64 core that costs almost 10 times as much as the 14900k which is 2.6 to 6.2 percent faster in the extended and standard overall scores now the intra frame raw scores are actually slower on the i9 but if you look at the long gop extended or standard as well as gpu effects they are double digits faster than the 7980x and that's because intel has quick sync and the hardware decoding and encoding is a lot faster with like intel's i or core you know cpus so if you're really doing video editing you can see the threadripper really doesn't make sense even for premiere pro at least the 64 core wait for the 32 core review in after effects the 5995 wx is about 10 percent slower in the overall scores the 7950x is about 15 percent faster in the overall scores the multi-core score in terms of rendering is about 10 percent slower but interestingly i would have expected the 64 core to be more than 10 percent faster than the 7950x interestingly the tracking score is about 80 percent faster on the 7950x and so is the ram preview even though we're running more ram more channels faster ram the 7950x seems to be faster just shows that even after effects doesn't quite know what to do with the 64 cores the 14900k is faster in pretty much every single way the multi-core is slightly slower and render slightly slower but the ram preview interestingly 30 percent faster even though we are running a slower ram and less ram moving on to davinci resolve we can see that the 5995wx is about 9 to 15 percent slower in the overall scores the 4k media score and the 8k media score is 31 and 17 percent faster which is just absolutely insane maybe the software and the platform and some of the drivers still can't fully utilize the 7980x which should be much faster even in differential resolve and if you look at actually all of my test you know results and how i was calculating you can see that it scores sometimes there sometimes there sometimes there sometimes there the 64 core just doesn't you know score consistently one score this is an average of 10 tests that i did for differential resolve and you can see sometimes they're 10 percent higher 10 percent lower which would actually change the results in here so i'll have to revisit the performance in these video and photo editing applications to really see uh, what the thread is going to do because i can see that the software is not fully utilizing the thread here even though for 8k 
it should make sense here at least you know somewhat when we're working with red raw or Ari raw or something like that where we want to push through a lot of power and we can actually utilize all of the cpu power the 7950x is about seven percent faster in the overall scores and then the 14900k about 20 to 25 percent faster which again is insane so the conclusion for video editing is again the 64 core right now doesn't make sense now let me know if you want me to do an updated results on this um, you know once we've updated perhaps of getting some more updates for the chipsets and drivers and biases and softwares to see if the you know is actually going to change this but very often that's the case here as well because 64 cores really the software aren't built for that and the 32 core might be even faster and if you have the quick sync from intel that might be even better pick just if you're doing full video editing but now the amazing news which is the cpu performance we're talking about cpu rendering whether it's cinema 4d v-ray blender where this guy absolutely shines now there's so much more cpu you know based workloads that can utilize multi-core performance so if you want me to add some of these in the future let me know in the comment section below but firstly let's take a look at v-ray the 5995wx is about 28 percent slower which is insane 7950x is 65 percent slower putting it the other way the uh, Threadripper is almost three times as fast as the 7950X. The 14900K is 68% slower, again, almost three times as fast as the 14900K. Now, if you're talking about performance per unit, like whether you put this in a rack or something like that, that's incredible performance. Moving on to Cinebench R23 single core and multi core. The single core on the 5995WX is about 25% slower and the multi core about the same. So we're getting about 25% increase over the generations, which is a very good sign. The 7950X is about 2.6% faster in the single core score. So basically, very, very similar. Like you're not going to be able to tell the difference between 2%. So to have a Threadripper that performs like the mainstream platform, like the 7950X, is absolutely insane. And the multi-core score is 61% slower on the 7950X. The 4900K is about 16% faster in the single-core score and about 58% slower in the multi-core score. Yes, the Threadripper is more than double the performance of the 14900K almost two and a half times the performance. Moving on to Cinebench R24, the 5995WX is about 22% slower in the single core score and about 25% slower in the multi-core score. 7950X is about 3.5% faster in the single core score, but about 63.4% slower in the multi-core score. The 14900K is about 16.4% faster in the single core score and about 60.5% slower in the multi-core score. In Geekbench 6, the 5995WX is about 32% slower in the single and multi-core scores. In general, CPU tasks what Geekbench 6 tests. The 7950X is about 3.4% faster in the single core score, but about 26.9% slower in the multi-core score. 14900K about 8% faster in the single core and about 18% slower in the multi-core score. Moving on to Blender and if you really want to do some serious rendering this is insane. 5995WX is about 27 to 29% slower in the monster, junk shop and classroom scenes which is quite a big performance leap in the CPU uh, you know, department. The 7950X is 63 to 68% slower in those scenes the 4900k about 67 to 69 percent slower almost 70 percent slower there and i also wanted to add 3995 wx which is the third gen and from the third gen where we had the last threadripper platform this is the wx or the pro cpu but the threadripper 64 core from 3000 series would perform roughly about the same is about 34 to 44 percent slower that's insane performance in Blender. The conclusion for CPU rendering or 3D, where you have to use CPU rendering, 
There is no competition really for that one. Well, only AMD is its own competition because they also have the 96 core, which will come with the Pro platform but you can also have it on this, you know, high-end desktop platform, which is insane. If you're looking at the Xeon, last one, what Intel released, honestly, they don't have a competition because it pulls a lot more wattage and performs just less powerful. Overall general conclusion for creators. The good sides first, it's got incredible CPU performance. If you need the multi-core performance and even the single core performance, there is nothing like that because you'd either have to compromise the single core or the multi-core. You want very good single core? Well, most likely the multi-core is not gonna be as good. If you're looking at like the 14900K, for example, or the 7950X, the multi-core isn't as good. Here, we're getting pretty much the same single core as the 7950X, but many times faster multi-core performance, which is insane. The expandability is absolutely incredible as well. You've got so many more PCA lanes, PCI Gen 5 lanes, if you wanna have PCI fine storage or GPUs or whatever NICs or capture cards or whatever, whatever you put on your platform, you're not gonna lose any bandwidth or any like features on your motherboard because it's got plenty of PCI lanes. And even RAM support, a lot higher than what the mainstream supports, more than five times higher what we can see in AMD or Intel mainstream platform and even power efficiency we see that the maximum tdp has been increased but actually the instructions per clock are much better than on the 5000 series as well so they did give us like a bit more power that we can pull there but even the instructions per clock are better on this one and they've got clever technologies where it's even more efficient now when we are idling the cpu it's not using as much power as it used to by just implementing different technologies and improving the energy consumption at different utilizations. And last two good things is that there is no rivalry to this. AMD is on its own making these things that have just no competition. Intel's really not caught up with this at all. And the other bit is the platform support. This new socket, a new platform, hopefully we're gonna have Ryzen 9000, 11,000, Threadrippers there as well, hopefully because DDR5 is going to be supported now a little bit longer because we're at the beginning of DDR5 rather than the end of DDR4 and that's why I guess AMD had to make a choice to not make a Threadripper 5000 um, to just support for Threadripper 7000 with DDR5. But that actually leads me to the bad sides and one of the biggest bad side is that AMD doesn't have any competition which means that the platform is going to be very expensive and for a very limited amount of people because no one is challenging AMD's performance, no the price point, which just leaves AMD alone in the top there. If you're thinking about this, $5,000, that might seem like a lot to you as just a freelancer, but in certain workflows, this makes total sense because you're gonna gain back all the money very, very fast. Like I've spoken to some of the creators who are saying, for this will pay me back like when less than six months I've actually made money and this is making money for me because the work is so much faster than this. Now, it has to depend on your workflow and I'm so glad that AMD gives us these tools to make our workflow faster. The downside for this 64 core is that it's really not feasible in most cases for photo and video editing unless you're working with 8K raw red or something like that. It might make sense for you, but for most people watching this video, might not be worth it. Now, let me know if you want to see the actual live codec test that we've been done. I might do a live stream of that where we're testing this thread out there. Let me know if you would like to see that. And even though I mentioned that the good side is the long socket support, actually, we're not sure if this has as long of a socket support as, you know, AMD has with their AM4 socket mainstream or AM5, they've promised kind of long support. Like, you don't know how much upgradability you can have with upcoming um, Threadripper platforms, but we can hope for the best. Overall, this is an insane CPU and not worth it for most, but for those who actually need that platform and perhaps are running Threadripper 1000, 2000 or 3000 series, it's time to upgrade now or actually now you have something to upgrade to because it's an insane platform.
Now, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments section below. And if you're a creator and you want to build yourself the best bank for buck creator PC and you don't have five grand, there's build guys much more affordable in the description below where I'm going to explain all the parts you want to get to build yourself the best bank for buck creator PC. And while you're there, go check out some tech notice merch and support the channel, especially during this holiday season. Some new merch is coming out very, very soon as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you very much, guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the comment section below. Bye-bye. Anyway, thanks, Newark, for sponsoring parts of this video and letting us know about the best deals for creators during the holiday season. So go check them out in the video description below.